Joining us right now is Liz Everett Chrisberg, who is the head of Bank of America Institute. Um, Liz, let's talk about this. Slowing to 2.7 percent, does that suggest that things are dropping off a cliff, or is this still a pretty healthy number? I don't think so. I mean, consumers are still spending. If you look actually at our total payments data, um, that was up 9 percent in February. But as you said, credit and debit card spending up 2.7, not you know, down from the pop of 5.1 in January, but they are still spending. I think we've essentially just got normalized to the decelerating growth that we saw through most of 2022. Everyone is waiting for when the consumer actually runs out of excess savings, when they get to the point that we really return to a normalized spending pattern. Yep. Are we there yet? Or when is it happening? I don't think so. I mean, I keep looking at this, um, looking at the consumer deposit balances and across all of the income levels, we continue to see, you know, decel you know they're dipping into savings, but there's a lot of, of buffer. Um, so consumers across all income levels have money. They have got 50 percent more, essentially, than they did pre-pandemic. And while, again, they're dipping in, it's really stabilizing. And in fact, the lowest income cohort, so those households that are under 50,000, actually saw a slight uptick this month. Now, In spending? It, not in spending, in deposit balances. Oh, in deposit in balances. Deposit balances. What was that from? Probably tax refunds. Okay. Um, but if we're looking at when's the consumer going to run out of money, our data is showing them, again, with close to 50 percent more than they had pre-pandemic. So if, if spending's up 2.7 percent, though, that's well below the rate of inflation. Well, if you look at, if you look at um, the credit card data annualized over the last three months, it was actually at 4.8 percent. So that is outpacing inflation. Um, the 2.7 number is lower, but again, if that's got a little bit of wiggle room from the holiday in January. So again, I look at the three-month annualized at 4.8. Can you break it down to, to know what they're spending on? Is this on consumer discretionary? Is this on things? We can. That we can. Yeah. And it is, if we look at the mix, it is absolutely a services story. So mm -hmm. airlines were up 27 percent. Um, people are getting on planes. People are eating in restaurants. Restaurants are up 7 um, where they're not spending money is on goods, and particularly we noticed on the home. So home improvement, down 7. Furniture, down 14. Wow. So definitely a services story, not a good story. And that's because probably everybody bought everything they wanted the last three years. Probably part of it and didn't get to travel as much as they wanted to. So we're seeing that, that uptick again. I, I, I want to emphasize why we take the time to break this down. Bank of America banks half of every, you know, one out of every two households yeah. in America. You've got some deep, extensive data that you have access to. Yeah, and it's, and it's not just the spending data. It's also looking at um, the deposit numbers that I mentioned before. But it, we also get to see inflows. And one of the things that I'm sure a lot of people have their eyes on is the labor market. And so one of the things that we looked at was what's going on with all of those missing workers, the two million workers who were getting direct deposit before the pandemic and no longer are? Who are those people? Are they going to come back? Um, and interestingly, a lot of those folks were prime age work. Some of them were retirees. We saw more people retire, likely due to poor health, than the population trends would have expected. But of the prime age workers, many of them were lower income, in-person, retail, and restaurant workers. The other thing we saw, which was kind of interesting, was there, again, prime age workers, internal migration, domestic migration from higher cost of living states, California, New York, Massachusetts, to states that have got higher affordability.